Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tech Zoomer talking to you here. And in today's video, I want to talk about WWDC, its newest date, and of course, newest leaks about it. Because if you don't know, WWDC has been involved in tons of leaks lately, especially the Apple Reality Pro or the Apple Reality headset. And of course, some M3 Max new rumors. And also, I want to talk about the AirPods Pro 2 could be coming the next few weeks with a USB-C case. So if you are excited, do not forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for your support. If you want more content like this, iPhone 15 rumors, iPhone 14 reviews, gadget reviews, drone reviews, I have one drone review upcoming, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for your unconditional support. Let's get started. Let's first talk about the AirPods Pro 2 and the real possibility of these AirPods coming out very soon. This would be more of a refresh to the case and not to the AirPods itself. Yes, the AirPods Pro might be coming the next few weeks, I would say, and they would be coming with a USB-C case. That's it. No other features, just a USB-C case. And that would be it. But I do think this is a very significant step for a USB-C iPhone on the iPhone 15. So yes, this is not a big thing. I don't think Apple will upgrade the AirPods Pro 2 but they will be releasing the case with USB-C, just like they did before when they first introduced wireless charging and when they first introduced MagSafe to the AirPods Pro first generation. Yes, I do think they are coming. They are very close and I'm really, really excited for the iPhone 15 with USB-C. So what can we expect next after this AirPods Pro for the next few months? Well, I don't think we are getting an April event I'm not sure, but I think we won't be getting an April event, a spring event. So our next confirmed event is WWDC. And on WWDC 2023, we are expecting tons of new products and hardware. But I don't think we are getting as much as we're thinking. So what is confirmed for WWDC? Well, for starters, the software. iOS 17, iPadOS 17, macOS, homeOS and watchOS. These are all of the softwares that Apple currently is developing and upgrading. So let's first start with iOS 17 with Mark Common stating that iOS 17 would be bringing some very requested features from every user. Yes, Mark Common, the same guy that one week ago told you iOS 17 would be a very boring upgrade with just stability features. This guy is like extremely accurate normally, but in this case, he probably got this leak wrong and because he doesn't want to hurt his reputation, Apple probably changed their minds and is probably updating with the flow and so we decided to do this. I'm not sure, but I do believe him. I do think iOS 17 will bring new features because Apple needs to compete with Android now every single year to keep their customers tied in to their OS. iOS is the most used software in the world from the Apple software and I do think Apple needs to create new features to entice new people to switch from Android. Yes, a lot of people are actually switching from Android to iPhone and the iOS is a very growing platform, especially on India, China. These places now have been enjoying more iPhones than ever because Apple is switching production to these places and now the prices are going down. One market that probably Apple wants to address with the next upcoming iPhones is the South American market. So let's see how Apple reacts with iOS 17 to bring new customers to it. New features are expected, maybe add interactive widgets, maybe multi-screen tasking support, maybe more home screen capabilities in terms of customization, more features like Android, maybe, I'm not sure. No leaks have been concrete on what can we see on iOS 17. Then we have iPadOS. iPadOS is strange. This is a very, very weird software. I do believe that iPadOS was born out of iOS, but it wasn't a well-conceived idea. I think iPadOS first would be a very hybrid type of OS, a mixture between iOS and macOS. But Apple then decided that they wanted to give some love to the Mac and kind of forgot about the iPad and the iPad OS fell in this weird place where it's not either a very good communication device like a phone, neither is a very good laptop replacement. So I made a video on what's a computer and what's the iPad state in 2023 as a laptop replacement. So if you want to watch it, go check it out. I think you will enjoy it that much. But going back to iPadOS, I don't think iPadOS will be a huge upgrade. Maybe bring some iOS 17 features to it. 
maybe give it a tiny bit more functionality as a laptop, but that's it. It will be disappointing as every year it has been. So I don't think Apple will give us Final Cut Pro. I don't think Apple will give us Logic Pro or even Finder or other things coming from the Mac. I think Apple wants to create this differentiation between the iPad lineup, the Mac lineup, and the iPhone lineup. Do not mix any of those together because they don't want to cannibalize any of those lineups. They are money makings for Apple, so I think they want to keep it this way. Because I do believe that the iPad OS is something that Apple decides that it's going to be this hybrid device that is going to run touch first inputs and then maybe, just maybe, some laptop features for people that want to use it as a laptop. So I think that the tablet market, the iPad market in general, it will be like this weird, very weird place where Apple won't be upgrading their iPads that much. They will just give it more features in terms of hardware. The software will be crippled and we are in this weird state for a long time. I think that iPad will be upgraded with stronger features once the Mac lineup and the Apple Silicon transition finish it up and actually turns kind of boring. So that's it for the iPad and the iPhone. What in terms of macOS? Well, macOS is a very hard thing to predict. macOS has been the oldest software that Apple has made. And so I think that macOS will be just getting more feature upgrades, more security upgrades, more patch, more bug fixing. That's it. I think that macOS, I do not ask more than that. Newer features are cool. Continuity camera are cool features. Features coming from iOS are also cool. So yeah, I'm not asking that much for macOS, neither the iOS. I just ask way more from the Apple OS team and I don't really care about watchOS and homeOS. So for the OSs, that's it. Then we have a M3, MacBook Air, M3, MacBook Pro, and the M3 Mac Mini. I don't think we are getting an M3 Mac Mini now on WWDC, but I really, really expect to get the M3 generation. The M3 chip will be announced. I'm almost sure of that. Apple will announce the M3 chip, all of its capabilities and advantages in terms of efficiency, and they will release it on an M3 MacBook Air probably. Just like they did with the M2 MacBook Air, it will probably come out on June, July or August. The MacBook Air came in July, so I'm expecting the M3 MacBook Air to do the same. With this MacBook Air, we will be seeing three nanometers on the M3 chip, which will bring more efficiency, more power, which would make the MacBook Air the thinnest and most long lasting computer ever made. Like in terms of power, it will be insane. Then we have the rumor that the M3 MacBook Air will be getting the 15 inch size. So we will be getting the M3 MacBook Air with two sizes, the 13 inch, 15 inch, two very similar devices, which only changes up the screen size to a 15 inch size and a bigger battery keyboard. Imagine that Apple is creating a competitor for the 16 inch MacBook Pro, a cheaper version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, just like the 13 inch MacBook Air is the cheapest version when compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So I'm really excited for this M3 lineup. This is going to be something that's going to change up everything. Maybe not the M3 MacBook Air, maybe not the M3 MacBook Pro that will come out together, but for the future of the Mac. The M3 generation will be probably the chip they're going to see on the Mac Pro, and I'm really, really excited. The M3 generation will make the MacBook Pros even better, the current generation that I have and I love. And when it ports out to the iPhone, that's where you're going to see the biggest gains. Because on a very small form factor, like the iPhone, a three nanometer chip will make the iPhone have insane battery life. And I'm ready for that. So having an M3 chip being announced on WWDC is just normal. I'm just expecting it. And the rumors corroborate with that. Tons of leakers, tons of rumors have been talking about the M3 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, new Macs in general, coming out in the next several months. So I'm really excited. Maybe in May, Apple drops its internal press release. Maybe they will talk about in June on WWDC. That's the most probable outcome, and that's the one that I'm expecting. But then there was something that was rumored to be on one more thing, the Apple VR headset. And this was insane. Like Mark Common continues to double down on the fact that the Apple Reality Pro headset will be coming out this June on WWDC. Again, in this week, he did it on its Bloomberg report. But we also got another leak today saying that Ming-Chi Kuo is expecting that the Apple Reality headset is going to be delayed. Now, is a battle between Ming-Chi Kuo and Mark Gurman. Which one do you believe the most? Which one do you think it will be more accurate with dates? 
Definitely, Mark Gurman is more accurate when speculating about dates of annou announcements, but Michiko is really accurate in terms of specs and rumors of a product's feature, because he's, a, I would say, a supply chain leaker, while Mark Gurman is more of an inside leaker. Yes, I'm expecting still the Apple VR headset to be at least announced on WWDC. It will probably not come out. Like, I'm sure it won't come out. Apple won't sell it on during the summer. They won't. But they will talk about it like they do with the Mac Pro. And yeah, it's going to be expensive. According to rumors, it's going to cost close to $4,000. But it's going to have premium materials, carbon fiber, glass fiber. It's going to have two micro LED 4K displays on the front. It's going to have tons of cameras. It's going to have a beautiful design, it's going to be light, beautiful, easy to use, no input matters necessary, just use your fingers. It's going to have a iOS based software called ROS and that's why I'm so excited for this new Apple category because it will enable you so much things. VR games, AR capabilities, just like having your Mac with separate screens using on it, it's going to enable you so many incredible features that Tim Cook is really excited. For me, I would prefer an Apple Glass where it will be an AR experience, not VR, but I understand why Apple needs to start with a VR mixed reality headset because the tech for Apple glasses is not ready yet. So I do think Tim Cook is ready to launch this because I think it wants to rush it to the market so they are not too late. I agree with it. Apple, launch it this year, see how it goes. First generation products are never perfect like the Apple Watch, like the iPhone. They needed two, three generations to iterate and to make it perfect, or at least usable, so it's normal if you release an unfinished product. Really excited, $4,000 is a lot of money, probably won't get it, but I'm very, very excited to see the reviews and the videos that came out, out of it. So yeah, are you excited for WWDC 2023? And would you buy the AirPods Pro case with USB-C? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, do not forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for your amazing support. This has been Texamer talking to you here. Bye-bye.